So let's go live to the Northern Territory Chief Minister, Natasha Files. She's speaking to our Northern Australia correspondent, Matt Cunningham, in Alice Springs. Thanks, uh, Kieran. Chief Minister, thanks for joining us. Uh, just speaking to locals on the ground here today, a lot of them are saying they've never seen crime worse than it is at the moment in Alice Springs. Has, has your government lost control of this situation? So Alice Springs is an important part of the Northern Territory and I have visited regularly and continue to do so. I'm here today listening to the community. I feel their frustration, their anger, uh, and we're working together to solve these issues. What do you think is driving the crime, the increase in crime that we're seeing here in Alice Springs? So it's a multifaceted issue. It's generational change. It's making sure that we've got functional remote communities and it's ensuring that we do manage alcohol, which is a legal product, but does does cause so much harm. Well, one thing a lot of people are saying has had a major impact, we've even heard the police commissioner say it today, uh, is uh, the return of alcohol to some of those Indigenous communities, but more importantly to town camps here in Alice Springs since uh, the sunsetting of the Stronger Futures legislation. Your, your government's been pretty clear you're not going to change your mind about this decision. Why not? So the previous coalition government turned its back. For decade, for a decade, alcohol management plans sat on senators' desks in Canberra. They did not listen to the community. What we have got in the Northern Territory is some of the strictest alcohol policies in the world, and we will continue to work in that space. We'll continue to work with local communities around how they want what is a legal product, but acknowledging the harm it caused, managed in their community. You do have those alcohol policies. You've been the alcohol policy minister for more than six years. You introduced a ban drinker register, you've got police standing on bottle shops, you've got a floor price for alcohol. I think that's why people can't understand why you won't change your mind on this. We, we had John Boffa on this program yesterday saying that if that happened tomorrow, we would see a, an instant turnaround in the issues we're seeing in Alice Springs. Why won't you listen to those health experts and change your mind on this? So we've put in place the measures that we can. As I said, it was that previous coalition government that just simply sat and did nothing. We've put in place measures. We continue to do so. There is the ability for remote communities to opt in, but there is also the ability to restrict the supply to those that cause harm, remembering it is a legal product right across Australia. And I think that's the other people don't think people don't quite understand, that there's the option to opt in um, to remain dry. Um, but these alcohol management plans were put in place. Why, why didn't you do it the other way around? Why didn't you make it an opt-out system so that uh, come July 17 last year, those communities remain dry, and if then they wanted to have alcohol, they could make an application, um, put an alcohol management plan in place, and then alcohol could perhaps be used responsibly in a community like that. Instead, locals here are saying you, you've just turned the tap on overnight and the result's been carnage. So we put in place a measure that is not race-based. The intervention, which is what the Stronger Futures legislation was, disempowered Aboriginal people based on their race. So in the Northern Territory, if you live on one street, you couldn't have alcohol. Yet a street away, because that was not an Aboriginal community living area, you could have a drink. We have a number of policies. I acknowledge absolutely how difficult the issue is and that's why I've kept that portfolio as Chief Minister, but we will have measures that are across the community that reduce the supply and reduce the harm. There's, there's Aboriginal people, though, who are calling for this to be undone. Marion Scrimger, in her maiden speech to Parliament, the first thing she said was that stronger futures, the, the return of alcohol to those communities was going to be devastating. This week, again, she's calling for a change in that position. Why, why aren't you listening to her? She, she's the Aboriginal MP on the ground here in Alice Springs. Why isn't her voice being heard? Absolutely, we're listening to all members of the community, particularly Marion Scrimshaw, who represents us in the Northern Territory Parliament, but people uh, out of the Northern Territory need to understand the context. We have some of the most strictest alcohol supply measures. We will continue to work in that space, but we will not have a race-based policy that disempowers Aboriginal Territorians. John, John Boffer also made the point that this was positive discrimination. He says, just like we have quotas, the Labor Party has quotas to get more women uh, into the Parliament, this was a, a positive discrimination that was having a, a beneficial effect for Aboriginal people, uh, particularly here in Alice Springs. So are you not listening to those sort of concerns? We absolutely are listening right across the community. That's why I'm here in Central Australia listening to the community. I absolutely acknowledge the pain, the frustration, the anger of the community right now, uh, and we're working with the Commonwealth Government and the Town Council so that we can have 
have measures, not in, just in Alice Springs, but right across the central Australian community. Matt, these issues are multifaceted. They are decades of disempowerment, of removing services from Aboriginal community, uh, and we absolutely get the sense of urgency to resolve these issues for a safer community. The other thing we've heard today from the Police Commissioner, we've heard it from others in the past, was the impact of the doubling of welfare payments of early access to superannuation under the former Morrison government. Uh, has that had a big impact, do you think, uh, on the crime that we're seeing now? We certainly saw a change in our statistics when COVID or during COVID. Initially, it was a significant decrease and then we have seen a change. We need to be careful, though. We need to make sure that people have the resources to feed their family, to get their children to school. And so this is about identifying the issues and community-led solutions tailored to, each, tailored to each community. The Mayor has called for the Australian Defence Force or the Australian Federal Police to come here. Do, do you have enough police on the ground here in Alice Springs um, or do you need that federal, federal assistance? The Northern Territory Government will continue to work with the Commonwealth, but we have the police in the Northern Territory. We have the resources. We need to talk to the Commonwealth Government about needs-based funding for certain services, but I don't believe we need uh, federal intervention from police or the military. So you have enough police here in Alice Springs at the moment? We put in place extra police leading into the Christmas period. I've met with police here in Alice Springs today. They're as frustrated as I am, but we won't give up. We will continue to work on the solutions, but I believe those solutions are within the Northern Territory, not from the military coming in into the Territory. We spoke to Steve Edgington today from Tennant Creek. Obviously, he was the mayor there in 2018 when Malcolm Turnbull visited. Um, he's raised concerns that when more police are sent to Alice Springs, there are fewer police in Tennant Creek. Uh, is that, uh, are you opening up problems in other parts of the Territory when you have to uh, bring a whole heap of police here to Alice Springs? Well, let me be clear. We can't police our way out of these problems. They are a part of it in keeping the community safe and the community supported. But we need to focus on those issues that I touched upon around services in remote communities around making sure that we support families, that when we have children that are doing the wrong thing, that we empower that family to care for that child, that we do not simply remove them and create another generation of problems within our community. So, so what should we do when we see kids five, six, seven, eight years old walking around the streets at night unsupervised? Um, you know, should those children be taken off the streets? Should they be put into a safe place? Should they, as Jacinta Price suggested yesterday, actually be removed from their families? I don't think removing Aboriginal children from their families is the solution. We need to empower families and support communities. You've seen us make uh, a number of changes and measures here in the community. We've got territory families that work uh, late into the evening and the early hours to support young people. We then have a safe place. We can take those young people and work through what is that unique individual circumstance and situation that we can support the family but for the best long-term outcome of that individual and a safer community. That's been happening for a while, though, and we're still seeing these issues. I mean, there has to be some kind of circuit breaker here. There has to be some kind of change in policy today, doesn't there, to address the issues that we've got here in Alice Springs. The Prime Minister's going to be here this afternoon. Are we expecting an announcement? Are we expecting anything significant to change today? It's not one single solution. It is all levels and all of the community working together. I absolutely get the sense of urgency. I get the frustration and the anger from the community in Central Australia. And that's why I'm here, making sure that the ideas and solutions my government has, that we can work with the Commonwealth and work with local leadership to put them in place. We heard Marion Scrimger yesterday say that um, the debate about a voice to parliament, it's, it's not really even in the minds uh, of people here in Alice Springs when they're dealing with the issues that they're facing here on the ground. Would you say that that is a fair reflection of a lot of people in the Northern Territory, not just here in Alice Springs, Aboriginal people in particular, when it comes to the, the debate that's going on in Canberra and Sydney and Melbourne about a voice to Parliament? I think the voice is incredibly important. We do need to empower and give that voice to Indigenous Australians. But I think the East Coast do need to understand that there is not simple solutions, that these are incredibly complex, that there is an incredible number of measures that are put in place, but there are mechanisms such as needs-based funding for domestic and family violence, for having accommodation for um, infrastructure in remote communities that can help drive that change. But I do think we need to make sure that the day-to-day -day operations of our community, that we don't uh, disrespect the opportunity we have to empower Indigenous Australians. Do we need more detail on what the voice is actually going to be? I think that that's a conversation that is happening right across our community and I think I've seen that change uh, since the Commonwealth Government was elected and that will continue over the coming months. The Karma Langton report, which you've no doubt read, uh, it recommends that there be two um, representatives on the National Voice to Parliament from the ACT, where there are 7,000 Indigenous people, and just three from the Northern Territory, where there are 75,000 Aboriginal people. 
Is that a fair reflection or is the voice to parliament going to be something that uh, puts front of mind the issues of Aboriginal people in Canberra and Melbourne and Sydney at the expense of people here in the Northern Territory? I think, like all Australians, there's not a homogenous view across Australia and for Indigenous people, and we do need to make sure, you know, from Central Australia to the top end, that all of those views are incorporated. Uh, and if that's a, a change in those numbers, that's something that can be considered. So you'd like to see more than the three that's being recommended by Marcia Langton and, and Tom Karma, more than the three uh, Northern Territory members on that uh, voice to Parliament, that national voice to Parliament, than is the plan in their report at the moment? I think we need to recognise that um, Indigenous Australians cross state borders. Uh, we see that uh, in the Northern Territory and, and other tripartite state um, areas, so we need to make sure that we reflect that in those numbers to the voice. Chief Minister, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Kieran, there you go. There's the Northern Territory Chief Minister Natasha Files on the ground here in Alice Springs. We are expecting the Prime Minister to arrive at about 2pm local time, 3.30 Australian Eastern Time.